five years ago, we poured our life savings into an abandoned walled estate, two hours north of London, with plans to make it our home and create vacation rentals and an event space. We're only the second owners after King Henry VII, but we soon discovered why no one else even bothered to put in an offer. The centuries have not been kind to this historic estate. We couldn't even see many of the buildings. The cottages, stables, outbuildings, gardens, and the grand 20-room manor house, all obscured by overgrown ivy, shrubs, and trees. We do nearly all the restoration work ourselves, reuse as many materials as humanly possible. We are nowhere near finished, but here's the incredible transformation five years in the making. When we first bought the estate, our first focus was to protect all the buildings and all the garden walls. They were absolutely covered in ivy. We couldn't see half of them. One of the walls collapsed completely because of the weight of the ivy that was on top of it. Once we'd cleared back all of the overgrowth, we could finally see what we actually bought. The caretaker's cottage was our first focus because we really needed to get it rented out because that rental money would pay for the ongoing restoration. But more personal to that was by Christmas, we had our family coming over from Spain and they needed somewhere to stay. We had about six months to complete it before Christmas came. So this is what we've done so far. We've fitted the cupboards and the built-in appliances. And as it wraps all the way around, we're gonna have an oven and a hob here. So this is one of the smallest spaces we've got in the caretaker's cottage. And this is gonna be the laundry. Still a bit dark in here, we need to get some light in, but I think he did an okay job. <laughs> Good job. Panelling is pretty much finished. We've just got the edging to do. So I really don't like built-in baths. And now you can see this shadow gap so that when you're up here, it looks like legs.
The caretaker's courtyard was our next project. The overgrowth in this area was insane. We worked on the little outbuildings and creating a driveway that our guests could come and park because when we bought the place, it was pretty much just dirt, vegetation and overgrowth. Dean has lost his phone. <laughs> He's basically just put it inside the roof. <laughs> I found it. He's found it. So going into our second year, we moved on to our second accommodation, which was the servants' quarters and the servants' courtyard. The servants' courtyard has been our biggest project to date, which is crazy when you think that it actually is just an outdoor space and it's quite small really, but there was so much to it. We replaced plastic gutters for the original cast iron gutters. Yeah, we don't like plastic gutters, but the worst part of it is when they mix plastic with cast iron. So this is cast iron. This is plastic. We had a leak here. And then they put a plastic end on and that leaked as well. The joints between plastic and cast iron are rubbish. We repaired the block paving. We found it under a load of overgrowth and we created these beautiful raised planters with Borgia's bulb lasagna that he layered so that during different times of the year, we'll have a display of beautiful flowers from tulips, alliums and hydrangeas. During the entire span of the year, we had our beautiful Portuguese laurel trees, which in summer blossomed in a beautiful white flower. We also had the beautiful white jasmine that we're having climbing up the wall of the servant's cottage. So I'm trying to basically mark um, to make the final planter for the courtyard. Looking beautiful. I love this idea of having like a flower box that you could put drinks and ice in, but it also could be a flower box. You can go in. Right. Do you want Oh my god. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Dean! That's disgusting! 
There's not just one. No. Oh, oh. I don't like this room now. Installing the furniture in this back bedroom and we have got our bed. Today is the day I finish off this space. It is going to be the smallest study in the world, but it's gonna work really well. We're gonna fit all our storage in here. We saved the ground floor of the servant's cottage for last, for obvious reasons. It was in the worst shape. room we couldn't tackle this time around was the original servant's kitchen which had too many structural issues and a beautiful cast iron range that would cost a fortune to restore. The gardener's cottage we could not see whatsoever it was absolutely covered in ivy so it was such an exciting moment to be able to uncover it and see what the hell we bought. ordered a bit too many. Now we have to move them. We've got a truck which is always handy. There's another late evening working but we've got some wine. Look at them beauties. We are taking this wall down <laughs> in the outdoor shower and um, it is so bad. It's been here all day. So nice. 
When we could pry ourselves away from restoring the buildings, we would tackle the gardens and what used to be the formal and working gardens. Momentous occasion for pulling out the final root in the rose garden. <sighs> Back in the day, every estate had stables where they kept their coach and horses. We tackled the exterior first. Oh my goodness, dude. It's the first part of our transition up to the hayloft, isn't it? That fireplace. How cool is that? And there is a log burner which exactly. you just lit up. The floor has taken me forever to take all the paint off and stuff. And then we fitted this big unit in here with the quartz worked up. Are we gonna get a horse? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Welcome to my mess. I, Here's how my brain works. I'm an works. organized person and I've been stressing about this. Oi. Ah. I mean, look at the amount of glass they're covering that. It's insane. <laughs> so cute, no? Oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> my heart is going really fast. Hi. Do you like these tables? Are they comfy? This is only like a test to see how it looks. You know, these aren't keepers. <laughs> The old hayloft hadn't been touched in more than 150 years. We absolutely adored the space and had a perfect vision for what it could become. This room the plan is, it's, it's going to be the library, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to have a bookshelf here. Yeah? Yes. And we're going to have an armchair over there and, you know, like a, it's like a reading area, but you're passing through. Honestly, I'm just coming in here and I feel so calm. It's so calming. Such a cozy space. The fact that we added that window, that skylight, is flooded with light. It is. I can see your pretty face. <laughs> no. Ta-da. Oh yeah, there's... Well, obviously he's fixing in place and stuff, but yeah. Yes. Borgia changed so many glass panes to get that right. I do feel like I have mastered how to change the glass by now. You know, there were nine panes, that was covered in paint. <laughs> As if we didn't have enough to do, four years into our project, we bought another property, a 20-room Georgian manor called the Dower House that was originally part of the main estate. People thought we were crazy, but we had our reasons.
Today we were gonna start laying the flooring. So we finished the walls. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought it would come to this day. We are tiling the hall. Yay! Light! It's a boy! <laughs> We had other plans in the pipeline and those other plans are... We're gonna have a baby! <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. We're expecting a baby. Very, very soon. So these books are from when I was a kid, these are my books. Even though we've accomplished so much in five years, there's still so much more to do. We still have the 20 room main house to tackle. It's a massive project and we've barely scratched the surface. So this is the not very exciting part of our house. The dry rot and the fungi that's growing. Then there's a the servant's kitchen, restoring the gardener's cottage, the rest of the outbuildings, and the majority of the dye house is still to be done. I reckon there's another five years worth of work left in it.